Hey there, and welcome to the second chapter of the module Human Microbiome. Today you will learn how your own microbiome develops and maturates, what are the factors that determine your microbiome composition and function, what this means for your well-being, and also what you can do to keep your microbiome in a healthy state. So for the next eight minutes, imagine that this is you. From our last chapter, you already know that one of the most important factors for your microbiome to establish is birth. But there is also something happening before. Recently, it was discovered that the uterine environment of a healthy pregnant woman is not sterile, but hosts bacteria in all the placenta, the amniotic fluid and the umbilical cord. These microbes are assumed to stimulate already the prenatal immune system and also a part of your microbiome might establish pre-birth. However, at birth you will get in contact with a huge microbial load for the first time, coming from the lower intestinal tract and the vagina of your mother. This microbiome is not a random one. Of course, the lower intestinal tract and the vagina of your mother has a very specific microbiota and their presence proves that these microbes were considered safe by your mother's immune system. So during birth, these microbes will colonize your skin, your gut and even your lung. And you will need those microbial loads since the environment you are born into has some challenges ready for you and your immune system. So clearly, if you are born by cesarean section, your microbiome develops differently. It will resemble the microbiota that is found on your mother's skin. Such differences might also affect your health in later life. Among the health risks that have been linked to cesarean section are the development of allergies, type 1 diabetes, obesity and asthma. Apart from the mode of delivery, other factors such as the health status, age and diet of your mother affect the microbes that you will be exposed to. Furthermore, the microbiome of your mother changes during pregnancy. Thus, prematurely delivered babies are adjusted with different microbes than babies delivered at maturity. This can also affect the development of the immune system of preterm delivered babies, making them more vulnerable to infections. As a consequence, preterm and cesarean delivered neonates are more often treated with antibiotics than babies delivered vaginally and at maturity. This brings us already to the next very important point – antibiotics. So first of all, antibiotics save lives. The finding of antibiotics was fundamental and their availability is of key importance to treat certain infectious diseases. However, we must be aware that an antibiotic drug does not differentiate between the good and the bad bacteria. So each time we take antibiotics to kill the pathogens, our symbiotic microbes are affected as well. Antibiotic treatment of the mother before giving birth and of course treatment of the baby after birth has consequences for the development of the microbiome. It reduces the numbers and growth of beneficial bacteria in the baby's gut, which are necessary for milk digestion. As a consequence, infants treated with antibiotics often show a decreased energy uptake, which can affect normal growth and development. Treatment with antibiotics has also been linked to the development of chronic diseases such as autoimmune disease, diabetes type 2 and obesity. In fact, despite their necessity in certain cases, antibiotics can affect early life microbial development, which is important for health in later life and should therefore be prescribed and taken with caution. Indeed, also cesarean section is very often the only way to save the lives of both mother and child. And of course, preterm delivery is in most cases unpredictable and unavoidable. Both will also not necessarily lead to the mentioned health problems. In addition, thanks to intensive research and the recognition of the microbiome in medicine, cesarean and preterm delivered babies are nowadays often treated with microbial communities so-called probiotics, that were designed based on the microbial composition of the mother's birth canal. This way, babies are adjusted with all the beneficial microbes they would get under normal conditions. But let's go back to the optimal case. You are a healthy baby, delivered vaginally at maturity from a healthy mother. So the next very important point comes right after birth, which is exactly food. Human milk contains all the nutrients that are necessary for you and your microbiome. Yes, also for your microbiome. Human milk contains immune molecules, proteins, lipids and a lot of oligosaccharides. 
Interestingly, these oligosaccharides are not convertible by yourself, but serve as a food source for your microbiome. Here, especially bacteria from the group of bifidobacteria are supported, which convert milk oligosaccharides to substances that protect you against pathogens, while supporting the growth of other beneficial bacteria. Thereby, your whole microbial community establishes due to the components of your mother's milk. And just to note, bifidobacteria are already part of the microbiota that is transferred during vaginal delivery. So, of course, for many babies, mother's milk is simply not available. Scientists all over the world are working hard to closely resemble formula milk to human milk and made already huge progress by adding pre- and probiotics. The biggest challenge is, however, to add these important milk oligosaccharides. Thus, mother's milk is, whenever possible, still their infant nutrition of choice. So, let's jump now to the next radical event for your gut microbiome the weaning process, where you receive solid food for the first time. Adding vegetables, fruits, potatoes and rice to your diet, your microbiome changes entirely. Milk-degrading bifidobacteria are reduced and other groups like bacteroidetes and firmicutes increase in numbers. These microbes are able to degrade non-digestible fibers to metabolites, which can then be used by your body as an energy source. And this is mandatory at your age right now, since you need these nutrients for your normal, normal development and growth. And now another interesting fact. Your gut microbiome is already matured and reaches an adult stage within the age of 3 to 6 years. This also indicates that the first years of your life are determining for health in later life. Apart from your diet, during your early childhood, many other environmental factors determine a healthy microbiome. Studies on large cohorts showed that contact to farm animals, pets and siblings represent factors that are directly related to a healthy microbiome and a healthy kid, with lower risk to develop allergies, obesity and respiratory tract diseases such as asthma. So these were the facts about your early life microbiome. Naturally, at the age of 65, your microbiome will change again, simply due to the aging process. Until then, many other factors will influence your microbiome, such as the environment you live in, your diet and medicine intake. This we will explain in the next chapter, when we talk about your adult microbiome. See you there!